It doesn't matter whether you are a leader in your region or not. Some aspects of existence cannot be changed even by geniuses. For example, the fact that we produce huge amounts of waste, the constantly growing population of Singapore, and the booming economy have led to a sevenfold increase in solid waste over half a century. In 1970, it was 1,260 tons per day, and by 2021, it had reached 8,741 tons. And this wave of waste cannot be stopped. In the last 15 years, the amount of plastic waste per capita has increased by 20%. But this wouldn't be Singapore if they hadn't come up with clever and effective solutions. How does the country get rid of waste? And why is the landfill in Singapore covered not with a bunch of garbage, but with greenery? Let's figure it out. Did you know that in 2019, Singapore processed 59% of all solid waste through various methods? If you're curious about how things are in other countries, this figure is at best half of that elsewhere. How does the recycling process work in Singapore? Waste sorted by residents goes to collection points, where recyclable materials like plastic, metal, and glass are further separated. Everything else is sent to waste energy plants. Singapore chose this method because it reduces waste volume by 90% which is essential for a country where land area is precious. Singapore has four waste energy plants, the largest being two is one, which was relaunched in 2022. After reconstruction, its efficiency increased by 20%. It can process 3,600 tons of waste daily, more than a million tons annually. Each day, more than 600 garbage trucks arrive at the plant. Waste from these trucks goes into special bunkers with reduced pressure to prevent odors. Then the waste is crushed to maximize efficiency. It is burned at temperatures ranging from 800 to 1000 degrees Celsius. The resulting ash after cooling goes through magnetic separators to remove recyclable metal impurities. Does this affect air quality? Singapore claims it does not. The factory operates an efficient gas cleaning system incorporating electrostatic and catalytic filters. This allows for the removal of dust and harmful substances. The heat from burning waste is used to heat water. Turbine generators powered by steam produce electricity. The plant not only sustains itself, but also generates surplus power. 80% of the generated electricity is supplied to the external grid. All of Singapore's waste to energy plants contribute up to 3% of the country's electricity needs. Not a significant amount, but still a decent bonus from waste disposal. What happens next? The ash left after incineration, along with other non-combustible materials, is sent to the Tuas Marine Transfer Station, from where it is transported by sea to the Simico landfill for final disposal. Everything is organized for maximum efficiency. Trucks pull up to the unloading platforms and discharge waste directly into the center of the barges. Excavators on the other side distribute it across the entire area. At the end of the day, the barge roofs are closed to prevent waste from blowing away. Since there is a 33-kilometer journey by sea to the landfill on the island, you probably wouldn't call it a landfill if you visited. There are mangrove groves, flocks of birds, fish in the water, and no stink. It's such an unusual landfill that Singapore authorities conduct tours here for interested people. Some even call it the garbage of Eden. How was this achieved? To begin with, all of Singapore's landfills were closed in 1999 and replaced by the single Semaka landfill. This is a 350 hectare island built from waste. We talked in our previous videos about Grand Land Reclamation projects that expanded Singapore's land area by 27%. Semaka is one such example, costing $1 billion. To understand how it all works, imagine a slice of an orange. The two slices are two small islands that have been here for centuries. The ring made from orange peel is a seven meter wall built to separate a part of the water from the rest of the sea. The remaining slices are the water into which solid waste is gradually deposited. Both the outer wall and each cell are reinforced with membrane materials to prevent pollution from leaking into the open sea. However, until each slice is used for waste disposal, it is connected to the sea via pipes to allow water circulation and prevent stagnation. When a new cell is needed, the pipes are sealed. Upon arrival at the Simico landfill, the barge carrying ash and waste docks in a closed building. Excavators unload rigid waste from the barge into dump trucks, which travel to an active cell and dump the waste. When the cell is fully filled, bulldozers and rollers level the surface and waste is covered with a layer of soil. Thanks to a thoughtful approach, mangrove groves and other flora quickly begin to grow on sealed cells. Therefore, the island looks more like a green park than a landfill. 
The air, water, and soil are constantly monitored for pollutants. Ecologists enthusiastically list unique plant and animal species living around Simaca. Coral reefs nearby don't feel threatened, and the country's residents come here for recreation and fishing. However, Simaca's capacity will last only until 2035. And if you haven't forgotten, it's the country's only landfill. But this is Singapore, and they prefer to be proactive. Currently, the country is implementing the concept of towards zero waste. Globally, it implies creating a closed-loop economy. Among specific goals is to reduce the amount of waste, going to Simaco by 30% by 2030. This would extend the landfill's life by another 10 years, until 2045. But within the Toward Zero Waste project, there are other ideas, such as new sand. These are heavier fractions of ash from waste incineration, suggested for use as additional construction material. Currently, its properties and potential applications are being studied because it shouldn't harm the environment, especially Singapore's water resources. So far, new sand has been used to build a pedestrian path in one of the coastal areas of the country, and a bench has been created using 3D printing technology. But more significant solutions are envisioned for the future. The second project involves reducing cardboard waste, mainly generated by product packaging. About 200,000 parcels from various platforms are delivered across Singapore daily. By 2025, this number is forecasted to increase by 50%. Therefore, in 2022, a pilot project for reusable packaging was launched, allowing consumers to either return it directly to the courier or at collection points. Considering that cardboard makes up about 7% of all waste in the country, this can indeed be helpful. Singaporeans don't forget to reduce the use of disposable packaging. The Bring Your Own initiative encourages using reusable bags, containers, and other reusable items when shopping. The project claims that in the first four months of 2022, the country used 2.5 million fewer disposable plastic items than the previous year. Did you know that the wealthiest countries in the world produce the most waste? 16% of the world's most affluent population is responsible for 34% of the world's total waste. The poorest countries, where 9% of the world's population lives, produce only 5% of the total waste. This means that as a country and its population become wealthier, the amount of waste increases. Without effective waste management and recycling technologies, we will drown in it. That's why Singapore's experience is definitely worth attention, especially for coastal cities. Singapore showcases a model that other cities worldwide could replicate. After all, the world generates more than 1.3 billion tons of waste annually, and this number is expected to increase to 2.3 billion tons by 2025. Singapore isn't one of the cleanest cities on the planet, just by chance. Besides waste management, the city authorities recently introduced hefty fines for littering and installed hundreds of cameras monitoring order throughout the city. For instance, the fine for throwing away a piece of paper is approximately $500 to $700, and it's even higher for littering, chewing gum, and storing chewing gum. We hope you learned something new and interesting from this video. If so, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. See you later.